Good morning, all. Um, I welcome back to the CPD UMT actual technical sessions. As per the uh, schedule, we are going to um, uh, get a lecture uh, by Professor Shivasharma Garu on pedagogical skills uh, for teachers in digital era. So before that, I would like to give a brief introduction about the uh, speaker. Professor DVS uh, Shivasharma is a professor of electrical engineering at NIT Varangal. He has been serving the institute uh, uh, in several capacities. He served as a dean faculty, um, and he is presently serving as a chairman of LMS committee. Uh, he has been an active volunteer of IEEE for long years. He was awarded with outstanding branch counselor, award by region 10 of uh, IEEE. He served the IEEE Hyderabad section in various capacities, such as chairman of student activities committee, chairman of power and energy society, Industrial Application Society, Power Electronics Society Joint Chapter, Chairman of Educational Society Chapter. And his re areas of research includes signal processing and machine learning, applications in power systems, um, power quality, condition monitoring, wide area monitoring and protection, grid integration of renewable energy sources. So he also de uh, delivered various uh, several lectures on pedagogical skills for teachers in higher education. Um, uh, with this brief introduction, I request uh, Professor Shivasham Magaru uh, to uh, carry on with the session. Okay, thank you, Naresh. Uh, welcome all the participants for the session. So the topic what uh, I chose for this uh, is a pedagogical skill for teachers in the digital era. In fact, uh, this is very prevalent and more important uh, even any time, even before the COVID. And but then during the COVID time, it has much more uh, importance is gained. And in fact, for the possibly that is the reason why many of you are attending. In fact, uh, every one of us attending and improving ourselves in terms of uh, how to cope up with the teaching learning process, improving our teaching learning process by adapting ourselves to attending the several continuing education programs, attending here and there and, uh, and acquainting ourselves with the new technologies and then getting on with the, how do our, the single mind focus for all of us at this point of time is how do I in, carry on with my teaching learning process in spite of not being continuously in face to face, but then uh, what, what are the different skills that are required? In fact, uh, I also have been attending other program like you are attending this program. I am resource person here. I am as an attendant. I am attending the another program is being conducted by IIT Hyderabad. But I took a break for giving this lecture here. Otherwise, uh, I was attending the five-day program on advanced pedagogical skills being organized by IIT Hyderabad. Uh, so, welcome all of you for this uh, session. Um, first, let me make the rules of the game very clear. And whatever that I had ideas that I am presenting here are gained over the several years of my experience and learn from the different resource persons and different books and references with, uh, whom with, uh, which I come across during my uh, experience over as a teacher. And then I am I'm, and I don't claim to be an expert in this domain, but that I am only claim that I have a little more experience than many of you possibly. Uh, the, in terms of the teaching, learning, and the active learning, and strategies, and so on. So, so the objective of my presentation is uh, give the outline of the pedagogical skills and then why the pedagogical skills are important for teachers, uh, either in the in all levels, either at the t either at the school level or at the degree college or at engineering college. The pedagogical skills for the teachers is essential skill that is to be equipped with. Unfortunately, most, most of our education systems, we are all uh, master, master in our domain and uh, did masters, PhDs, but then uh, we know little about the pedagogical skills and that is the reason why, in fact, uh, the very fact that you are attending this program is being hosted by Teaching Learning Center of NIT Warangal, essentially the MHRD perceived that the gap 
of the teachers who needs uh, pedagogical and teaching learning processes so give to more insights into this for a uh, for a faculty this tlc was established and i am sure professor uh, ramchandra must have given insights into the tlc in fact this whole program is also being organized as part of the activities of the teaching learning center at nit warangal so essential objective is to give you the certain insights into the pedagogical skills and then uh, uh, is my presentation visible no. naresh no. Huh? no sir no sir no no this oh, come just a minute this suddenly is gone Now is visible, yeah. Yes, sir. So, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pose you a lot of questions than the solution, giving you the solutions because the the different challenges that we are facing, we need to address. Uh, this one hour of duration will not be sufficient enough to talk about the solutions. But then possibly I will give you more questions on what are the challenges that you are going to face, and then possibly the rest of the proceedings that are going to take place in the. Uh, next four or five days, we'll give some solutions. Uh, my colleagues are going to share some of the solutions, some of the tools uh, which we can address some of the issues that I'm posing here. And uh, there is a very much essential the need to use this uh, technology in practicing pedagogical methods in the teaching learning process. The most of the TLC, the activities that is being programmed here, is essentially focusing on what are the different technology digital tools that are required that can be used to adapt the pedagogical tech pedagogical methods. to improve the learning outcomes of the students uh, in the in, while carrying out the teaching learning process and then i am going to throw some light on that and then uh, uh, you know that there is a synchronous learning and asynchronous learning and ubiquitous learning uh, ubiquitous learning is uh, and uh, we need to understand the learning can take place now from i am sure for most of you are from operating from different places possibly from uh, i don't know how many of you are from outside the state and other states as well but then independent of the place where you are sitting and independent of the time where you are uh, uh, located yourself so you will be able to carry out the teaching learning process that is what is ubiquitous learning yes so now i just throw some light on that the need for the ubiquitous learning and then in fact uh, covid has helped us to uh, fast forward by almost like uh, fast forward our technology use of technology in education by more uh, by at least maybe at 10 years uh, it has fast forward by 10 years so that is the stage in fact it is a is a welcome feature for all our teachers and as well as the teaching learning community because uh, adopting this technology is not so easy but for we are in a position to that we are forced to uh, compel we are compulsion to adopt this technologies to carry on out with our practices i'm going to show some light and then i'm not sure whether you get time on there are some digital tools what that can be talked about and i'm going to use it now in fact i wanted to take a big picture of uh, the challenges that you are facing in the digital era and then take it out to uh, taking you to the especially in the context of the education and the digital skills and competencies have become very crucial for teachers today right without the digital skills and competent digital competencies it is very difficult to survive in this uh, even before not i am not saying uh, not only in the covid but even pre covid era it is very essential that the teachers must be acquainted with the digital competencies are very much required and using and that is the, the problem is much more relevant now in the during the covid time using this technology in teaching learning process is no longer an option but it is compulsory again i am telling you not necessary that we are all gathering now gathering and to learn with this technologies because it is a covid even before covid the the technologies use of this technologies was mandatory but uh, it, it it has it is known that it improves its efficacy of the teaching learning process but then we were not paying much attention before then then we are forced to pay attention to this um, thanks to covid for uh, doing good for the teaching learning in, in a way in one sense not in all senses but using the technology is uh, learning process in rural but it is compulsory 
now also we look at the all of you are aware of uh, national education policy 2020 it also advocates that uh, the future of the education is uh, technology has to be embedded and integrated very much into the education system and then it calls for an urgent shift towards a technology enabled teaching learning process than the in addition to the conventional classroom as well so the this is also focuses us for us to move on the technology enabled teaching learning process and now i i i borrowed this quote from our director uh, he quite often uses this now the future this technology impact of this technology is will technology will not replace the teachers but definitely the teachers with the technology we are are going to replace the teachers without technology teachers who are equipped with the technology are going to replace the teachers who are not conversant who are not using the technology that is going that is for sure so it is, uh, is uh, that makes us to is imperative that we should move on with adapting the technology in several ways to continue the teaching learning process now so if you look at the education uh, in the digital era digital era is influencing every walk of life every human activity is influenced by the digital era and so is the education as well and uh, now why education is most much more important why gs is important is i know i don't need to mention i want to take a quote from nelson mandela the education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world right education is the most powerful weapon through which you can bring a change a better change a bring a positive change in the society and bring a positive change in the nation bring a positive change in the world so education is plays such a pivotal role in bringing the change to the universe for a better change better uh, changing bringing a, a change a positive change to the world what we are going to live and future generations are going to live the and also i add one more quote here that the success in the future of any professional will be based on not on how much people know but on their ability to think and act creatively i underline your success is not going to depend on how much you know but it depends very much on the ability to think and act creatively now if the future is going to be this the ability to think and act creatively we being in the profession of a teaching where we in the profession in the profession of may bring generating the professionals for future it is essential that we should impart the right skills the ability to think and act creatively how do i make my learner to think how do i make my learner to uh, think creatively and how i impart my higher order thinking skills into my to my learner is the most crucial aspect of bringing out a required positive change in the society in the nation and the change the required society, change in the world as well so in other words to say that it is very much important for the teachers to carry on in the teaching learning process with a single and sole objective of making my learners to be creative i should be able to impart their right order thinking skills in my learners that is the sole objective of in the domain whatever the domain that you are talking of be it a science be it a physics and whatever the subject is but you should be able to how do i bring in the higher order thinking skills and how do i make them innovative and creative thinkers in their own discipline is the single most bottom line objective with which all the education system must carry on i i hope all of you agree with that anyone you please can post your response on the chat box do you agree with me that the future of education is wholly dependent on the future generation future generation is being trained by the today's teachers and hence the imparting the higher order thinking skill to the student is the single most uh, objective with which we should carry on with our education yes <clears throat> now how do i do that there are several ways uh, than which you can do that and especially the technology that comes in the way to impart the higher order thinking skills Uh, can be used technological paradigms now a lot of digitalization is happening the whole this is a digital world this digital economy and uh, this is a era of a digital uh, innovations and the digital technologies every sphere of activity is influenced by the digital era no education is no exception 
But then if you look at the two dominant technological paradigms that are shaping this world in today's digital era is one is through automation. Technology is replacing the work through automation, right? Industrial automation. For example, I'm sure all of, some of you might be aware of Alibaba chain of hotels. No, no, no longer human resources are required to carry out the hospitality industry. Complete human resources are replaced with the uh, machines. That is, that is the status of uh, the use of the technology. So human resources, wherever human resources are replaceable by the machine, possibly we don't need, the future workforce is not required for that. We future workforce must be trained not to the task what can be replaced uh, man, what can be replaced by the machines, but they in the other area. What is that other area I'm going to talk about? Apart from the automation, next and most important uh, uh, technology that is happening is technology is changing the way we communicate, collaborate, and the knowledge creation, right? This is, this is, this is marvelous, the technology that is changing. Now, you see today morning you are attend a webinar at 5 o'clock from, delivered from USA, and the evening sometime you are attend to a webinar that is being hosted somebody from Australia, all across, in, a, in, a, in a one day, you can roam around the whole world, attend to from different universities, different resource persons sitting at your home. That is what the technology is providing an opportunity for us today as a teacher to learn and to advance our learning. So the, the communication and collaboration is the most significant contributor uh, is being contributed by the digital technologies. Now, when the technology is changing and the human resources are being replaced with the technologies like automation and then wherever it is, then what should be the education? Education is uh, for the perspective of education is to bring the future work, to prepare the workforce for the future requirement. For the future requirement, if automation is taking place, is somewhere what all machine can do, if you uh, um, build the manpower for uh, some such things, it, the people are not going to use it because they, are, they become, because today technology is going to replace the man with the machine and hence such areas do not find. So that means our education should not focus on the areas which can be replaced by machine is not the thing what is required to be trained for. Then what is that our learners should be trained for? Learners should be trained for the, the human capacities. What are the human capacities? The human beings possess capacities for innovation, capacities for nonlinear thinking, and collaborative knowledge. Right? This, this thing cannot be done by the machine. The capacities for innovation, capacities for nonlinear thinking, capacities for collaboration between the two human beings, two scientists, two engineers can collaborate and then make a thing. Two computers cannot collaborate unless human intervention is required. That means the future workforce, what is required, must be trained towards nurturing their unique human endeavors than focusing on the other things which can be replaced by the machine. So this is, in fact, this is a very, very powerful objective of the education system is and this is I taken from the Journal of Canadian Association for Curriculum Studies. So those of you who are interested, you can go through that. It's a very good article in terms of what should be the tomorrow's, the next century education should focus on. Next century education should focus on the nurturing the human, unique human endeavors, the capability for nonlinear thinking, capability for innovation, capability for creativity, capability for higher order thinking skills. These are the things which should be you know, focused by the educationists all over the Blow. Essentially, now this is where I'll skip that. So the fundamental shift towards unique human skill recognition development is the critical aspects of the future workforce, and hence our our education, whole education system must focus on this, right? I'll skip this slide. Uh, so, so while imparting the higher order thinking skills, what are the roles that uh, we all will play? Right now, we can look at this is a four quadrant, uh, four dimensional uh, diagram here. See, this is where our learners are. Right, we are students, they are, they are students, and here there are the PAs, tutors, facilitators, and mentors and instructors who are the teachers. Now, conventional way of engaging the learners is only this we are engaging them through this. Right, your learners between the only interaction between the teacher and the learner, but. Now the technology is changing so, so fast, not necessarily the learner don't need to depend totally on the teacher, 
but he can depend on the teacher but not totally on there is other domains through which he can learn the learning activity can always go on even in the absence of a teacher by adding another two uh, two dimensions that is what is known as a learn creating a learning environment another is making the learner towards uh, self directed learners that means self directed learner is my curriculum and intended learning outcomes are very specified acquiring the new knowledge new skills what is required i make them very clear so that the student will be direct towards a self directed learner he will be made towards a self directed learner so now the conventional classroom we are engaging only in this process this is a learner this is a teacher there is activity interaction between the learner and the uh, students are going to take place that's the only way in which a conventional way of classroom is happening now the digital era is enabling us to make the learn to enable the learner to use they create an environment there means a lot of resources the lot of um, physical and virtual environments that are created a lot of tools are available and create that environment we facilitate the learners with this kind of learners where he will be able to carry out the learning effectively in addition to that that means with the teacher and with the creating environment there is now uh the learning environment uh, the number of resources with the technology that is available he can have access to different tools and resources are abundant uh, available and he can have access to that so and now intended learning outcomes what is expected learning outcomes also are make it very clear in terms of nba or uh, in terms of the different uh, course outcomes program outcomes we are already defining that so with that so now so now what is a learning is learning is an activity interaction of learners interaction of learners with environment learners with the environment and environment leading to planned outcomes this is what is the objectives are very much clear the outcomes are very clear and supported by the other people like faculty so learning defined pre learning it, uh, uh, outcomes are obtained by the learners with the creation of with the facilitation of the teachers and the facilitation of the learning of environment the active this whole gamut of these activities involved in today's learning no longer the learning activity is confined only between the teacher and the taught right so this is the environment in which is potential to deliver the better learning outcomes than what it can realize only with a, a live classroom interaction between the teacher and the taught right the whole world is moving towards creating this kind of a learning environment where this is where you are uh, providing the lms and then defining your nba graduation outcomes and then of course interaction teaching and uh, earlier pre covid era we are having a live class a one to one class in a, between the four walls but now we have a class between the across the web right from uh, through telecommunications now this is what is the is a significant paradigm shift that is required for imparting the making the learners to be a better learning now what do what is the digital pedagogy and what does it uh, pedagogy is involved all about in right i am i am going back the pre specified outcomes are very much defined and the learner must acquire these outcomes and then there is a teacher along with the environment creating a right environment creating the right resources for the learner along with the uh, teacher you will be able to uh, meeting the objective of the learning outcomes with the help of the learners now the what is pedagogy pedagogy is uh, pedagogy is uh, learning in the context of teaching and teaching that has learning as its objectives right this is what is we all masters in the subject the domain is the b electrical engineer or b mechanical engineer we do masters and so on we we do we do our doctorates and then we are all master about the knowledge but does the subject knowledge is is good enough for me to realize the learning outcomes in the student right i'm going to throw some more light on what are the challenges that as a teacher that we face to realize the learning outcomes in the student right the pedagogy events the if the if i my objective is make the learner to learn how do the learner learns should be part of my understanding should be i should have the definite knowledge in terms of how the learner learns and then what is the way in which i can support the learner right so in this in the previous diagram you can see that it is only learner as a, a teacher as a supporter so this is what is the pedagogy is pedagogy is focus on the process of teaching and learning 
while the education system provides a context right what is digital pedagogy this is all pedagogy what is your what that's what is the tlc is essentially aiming towards uh, imparting the pedagogical skills for the teachers uh, in their respective domains uh, now the digital pedagogy is using the digital techniques is as much as using the digital tools thoughtfully as it is about deciding when which digital tool to be used when and which tool to be used when which tool not to be used and about paying attention to the impact of this digital tool on the effectiveness of the learning right i repeat again digital pedagogy is all about making giving pay, paying attention to the attainment of the learning outcomes not not audible uh i am mean not audible uh, are you okay so a small disturbance just now you are audible you are pretty much audible yeah yeah now yeah, somebody is put a on not audible okay now the digital pedagogy is all about realizing how do i advance the learning outcomes in the students using the digital tools by enabling and creating an environment by which he will learn and he realizes the uh, objectives that's what is all about the digital pedagogy and of course in this process in the whole process of this five day program you are going to learn about the different tools that can advance the learning of the students and now <coughs> now you look at where are where are where do we stand now in the world paradigm of teacher as a prime source of knowledge is no longer valid right i am sure all of you agree with that is there anybody who disagrees with me only the teacher is the prime source of knowledge no longer if now the professor sitting in mit the student learner can access to the professor sitting and doing giving a delivering a lecture in mit or stanford of that kind of a scenario what we are the learner has a wider choices of the learning if only he has an intention he has a wider choices of learning more effective learning right and now if it is a world paradigm of teacher saying that as a, i am is not valid then teacher if the teacher takes a stand that i will tell you what i know and the learner takes a stand i can find out what i need to know from the different resources that are available right if the teacher takes one stand on one side that i i can i'll tell you what i know and the learner takes a stand that i uh, i can learn anything from whatever is required from the through resources that are available where do this teaching learning process will go on right if the teacher is on the other end learning it is another end how do i continue the teaching how do i make my teaching to be contemporary to be relevant in the present day unless i make some effort towards making my teaching in the context of available resources to the learner is much higher i the student the teacher has to raise the raise his bar and see that how i can enable my teacher as a uh, as a facilitator should be the more focus by creating the right environment for them to know so that's where all our digital pedagogy and all our teaching learning context in terms of technology that's what we are going to uh, look at so education is an experience that has a format effect on the way one thinks feels and acts i want to highlight this i pay attention to all of you education is not merely providing a knowledge right education is something what it has a format effect on one the way one the learner thinks that's what is your cognitive skills you are imparting the learning in the cognitive domain so it is affecting his thinking and affecting him in the in the way what he he or she feels that's what you are imparting the learning in the affective domain and then the way learner acts right so this is where your uh, psychomotor domain so that means the learning is uh, education is an experience provided a learning experience to the user which should impart the it should create a change in his thinking should create a change in his feeling create a change in his actions in the actions are a behavior right so but this is something what uh, this is a holistic objective of the education is whether we do that whether somebody does it is a different question but this is what as a society demands that this is what it is a learning should be made to affect Uh, whatever the learning that is taking place by the student the learning should affect him in his cognitive domain by improving his uh, thinking skills learning should affect him in his affective domain thereby 
his feelings and his uh, his feelings are changed to the uh, for better and his skills are developed this it should affect him in the cognitive domain in the uh, psychomotor domain where he thinks and acts there is a skill to do certain things are improved unless education is something that is that imparts in all so obviously it is uh, we are in the business of education it is essential that we should make the bring the learner a change in his thinking change in his actions and change in his feelings that is what is the wholesome education is expected to now uh, what is learning right so now this is what we are talking about what is expected of this learning outcomes are changed and then we, we need to affect in all the three dimensions of his learning so what do we know about the learning how he learns right so here let me go through one or two slides on the learning so the learner learn please any one of you can unmute and say how a student can have learned your lecture is over any one of you can unmute and respond a lecture is over how you can say that the student has learned any of the participants can unmute and respond by asking questions by asking question okay so how asking questions what it is suppose he has something he stored in mind right he repeats it right suppose i i keep my voice recorder there in the class and why if i ask you it repeats a selective repetition of the answer is it the aspect of a learning or something bigger aspect of learning if there is a change in his behavior after the yeah. teacher taught yes that's that is what it is so the only rubric that you can use for the student has learned is a change in his thought process if there is, he has some pre state some thought process is there is a change in his thought process there is a change in his uh, uh, feeling yes the subject is suppose the feeling is motivation the most important aspect of uh, uh, creating a feeling is that's what we do in the classroom is the motivation to motivate them right motivate means he 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 is made to give, get a feel that yes the subject is important it's interesting that is the motivation is right the motivation is part of your uh, affecting him in the affective domain right and then we were the psychomotor the skills that we do in the laboratory curriculum and so on and so forth but essentially the learning is result learning results from what the student does and thinks and only from what the student does and thinks right what he thinks and what he does and what he feels not by reproducing reproducing the if i ask you some question he will answer it helps me to assess that's it it helps me to assess whether how far he understood whether he is interested or not interested in is a some very indirect way that is the best possible thing that we can do right but actual learning is only if there is you can say his learning has taken place only because you cannot do the learning can take place only in his mind the teacher can advance learning by what is the role of the teacher the teacher only can advance his learning by influencing what the student does to learn please uh, i underline this statement is very 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 significant statement what the role of the teacher teacher can advance the learning by influencing the student to get into some activities through which he will learn not that i remember if i ask a, if i deliver a lecture for 60 minutes and if he reproduces the, all 60 minutes of lecture like by a, like a parrot you cannot say that the learning has taken place right but because we cannot assess them it is easy to assess by asking questions and then we are considering that as a uh, rubric for assessing his learning but then your evaluation is something that comes as a all together as a different uh, aspect but essentially the learning the role of the teacher is to advance the learning by influencing the student to engage in some activities that's what uh, engaging the student instructional objectives that is going to be shared by ajit kumar reddy later engaging the students in the learning process is the most crucial and the teachers role is playing a very important role in the engagement of the uh, engaging the students right the learn so now the famous confucius quote learning without a thought is a labor lost and thought without learning is perilous so it is essential that a learning is should be associated with the change in the thought process and now what do you know about uh, how we learn so now 
the knowledge is constructed in the learner's mind right i talk uh, i give a lecture for 60 minutes and then uh, i assume that there is a knowledge is not transferred what i have in mind does it exactly transfer to him can any teacher make his knowledge whatever by 60 minutes of talk can we transform this knowledge what i have in mind for the 60 minutes to all 60 students sitting in my class no the student actually selects a few yeah few important points immediately needed to him yeah. or relevant to him yeah exactly that means what all i want to impart in their learning all 60 students are not taking the same manner right why why all 60 students are when i engage just to, i engage them with my teaching for 60 minutes keeping some interaction and so on but the end of my class does whatever that i wanted to make the students to possess their mental maps can i create all 60 students do have the same mental maps about the concept what i teach can you ensure that no 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 no, no. no. why because everybody's goal is different everybody's immediate needs are different yeah exactly now the knowledge is constructed in the learner's mind not received from the teachers yes. the it's the only input that is being given by the teacher but then how he processing it inside is something what based on which his learning is in, uh, taking place right so we cannot assess what takes place in his mind what all we can do is we can only impart them impart i take uh, give the inputs to the computer what it what he, how he processes that information whether he delivers the outcomes whether he is big the all because that is being constructed is constructed is processing only in his learner's mind which by by any means i cannot teacher cannot assess completely to a certain extent so good teacher with a, this is where your teacher is whether somebody is not following if he is um, not thinking is not is physically present but uh, mentally absent in the class possibly some experienced teachers will observe that then will engage him in some activity so that he will be in the constant pursuit of constructing his knowledge from receiving the input from the teacher for all 60 minutes whether can we make the student to receive the inputs and then analyze it process it and then construct the new knowledge in his mind that is what is objective is but then physically it is more than uh, i do agree that we all being in the teacher but that is expected i do agree but then we will not never be in a position to do that but we cannot do that but then what is the best way of reaching out towards that in that direction is something what as a teacher we need to pay attention to it all of you agree with that yes 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 yeah. <clears throat> so when we talk to students our thoughts do not travel seamlessly from our brain to their brains right for example i give a very uh, example suppose let us assume that i want to talk about a classroom right a classroom in a university if i want to talk about i want to do something uh, uh, i want to talk on that i don't need to, because a classroom is something a concept is in everybody every student's mind is every student when you say classroom every student will have the same similar question in the mind yes yes or no more or less now in case if i talk about some uh, new concept right let us assume that i have photoelectric effect so i want to talk about the photoelectric effect and if i this concept is new to all the students right now how do they construct their knowledge they construct they construct they construct their knowledge about my inputs based on what they what they perceive in the before they all have the plus 2 knowledge in the physics and chemistry they whatever they have studied the different people have a different perceptions on that perceptions i want to build the effect of photoelectric effect on the uh, for to the students uh, how I, how our photo ionization takes place if i want to impart that possibly i cannot assume the same thing because if it is like if the picture is like a classroom the classroom picture is clear everyone can visualize the same thing if there is something what is uh, clear for all then i can imp easily impart what is photoelectric effect but every student has uh, different uh, ionization somebody know somebody do not know somebody know photo ionization somebody is not knowing all this should become integral part of my because 60 different students have a 60 different models 
mental models about ionization. Then when I'm talking about the photo ionization, unless I bring those, what they have in mind, I correlate them and then we build over it, then only it can happen. Because the 60 minds are constructing the concept what I'm teaching now based on their mental models. They all, they have a different mental models and they're constructing on that. So that takes uh, quite uh, some time and hence that is the reason why outcomes of all 60 students will not be same at the end of one hour of the same lecture is being given, but then 60 students will, all the, will have a different 60 different perceptions. This is essentially because the initial condition, in electrical engineering we call this initial condition is not zero. Initial condition is not same for all. Initial condition of mental map of X is different from Y is different from Z and hence there is a, a mismatch of what is happening now, what I'm teaching and what I have in my background. They said this becomes a discontinuous. So new concepts will also be interpreted using their mental models. So I want to go through that. So yeah. And then these mental models becomes bottlenecks for the learning. So these mental models become bottlenecks for the students' learning. Now, do we have time as a teacher? Now I have 60 minutes of time and I'm given, I'm, I was asked to go and talk about the power electronics, basic introduction to power electronics or some, any other subject. I assume that, unless I assume that all of them are having some knowledge, I cannot move on, right? But that is the assumption that we are making it, but then that is becoming an impediment for the learning. So why is all 60 of them are not Learning the same thing is because their mental models are different and these mental models change slowly. If I only expect that all 60 students should have the perception of about the concept what I am teaching should be same as what I am thinking, unless I bridge the gap between all the 60 different models of the students with my knowledge, it is, not, it is difficult to bring that change. So the mental models changes very slowly and uh, students stimulate the students to build new mental models to engage in deep learning as opposed to the surface learning you should engage this is where your student engagement comes in so you should engage your students in different learning activities engaging them in different learning activities so that he will be engaged in the deep learning as opposed to the surface learning we are all when i say i conduct a test and this is the syllabus is given this is our reading material and what do students do? He will do, he will engage in a surface learning. Because anyway, five page uh, 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 reading material or 10 page reading material, I read it and I conduct the test. I reproduce whatever is easy, is easy. That is essentially a sur because of the surface learning. But not that what we want is not the surface learning, but the student must be engaged in a deep learning. Deep learning means you should give them the exercises, you should give them the activity, engage them in some activities for which your answer, your reading material may not be, it only should guide you, but it will not directly provide you a solution. That's where the learner will be engaged in thinking process and hence that is going to make you, make him engaging in the learning and the deep learning. Less learner must experience that their mental models do not work or false or faulty. Unless a student is made to think that yes, what I is, the teacher is talking about the photo ionization and then possibly what I was thinking is I was not having, I, I know only ionic bond and ionization but this photo ionization I was not aware, possibly he will look at the what are the possibilities of a different base of ionization and then pay attention to photo ionization, which material gives, uh, all that will pay attention. Unless he made to think that yes, I, what I have in mind is wrong, then he will be correcting himself in terms of improving himself in terms of learning himself so that his mental model is corrected right unless he made to feel that he is uh, having a wrong mental model or mental model is not correct is not working uh, he will not be engaged in that so objective of engaging the student must be made the students to make them to feel that yes my model what i have in mind about this concept is not clear and then i should be able to spend more time and engage myself with some activities some reading activity and so on and so forth so that he corrects his mental model and he'll come on par with the expectations this is very much required if only you want to realize the learning outcomes of all 60 students the same learning outcomes i think i'll skip this time for a want of time 
uh, objective of the pedagogical skills. Now, what is the objective of the pedagogical skills? So what are the digital pedagogical skills is? This is what is about. What is that? To bring the best possible learning among the widest variety of learners. This is the most important challenge that we all face in a, in a class of 60 or 90 and 120 students. Then is, how do I bring the best possible learning outcomes, more or less? My learning outcomes, I'm expecting all of them to be there. But then the learning outcomes, how do I make the students, how, what, what methods that I should adopt, what tools that I should adopt, what is the way in which I should engage the student so that all the learners sitting in my class, all of them are getting this uh, learning outcomes of the level that I'm expecting. That's what is the learning outcomes is specified. And we expect everyone is to do reach that learning outcomes. But we, we are not, uh, all of them are not able to, then only 10% of the students will answer and the rest of them will not answer. And then somewhat, some, uh, some of the students in the class, even they will, till the end of the semester, they will not be able to break the ice and then still they will be in the dark. And then they are left unattended, right? The so-called slow learners, what we are tagging, it is essentially they are we are not engaging them in engaging some activity, right? So that you should create in the effective domain. First, you should affect you should affect him in the effective domain. Then only he will come into engage into the activities. Without getting him and making him to feel or motivating him, it is difficult for him to get engaged in the learning activity. So whatever it costs, it should do it. The pedagogical skills is all about engaging and learning all the different means and ways by which the learner is engaged all 60 widest variety of learners the class the number of students who are sitting in my class they are having a widest variety of learners their their learning capabilities are different the each of them have their own learning curves and then how do i make all of them to learn the expected outcomes then i say that that's my learning outcome they realize this is where to what are the engaging them is this is what is all about the objective of these pedagogical skills i hope uh, any questions at this point of time before i move forward you see if any of you have any questions on the any of the points what i raised i welcome All of you agree with my points, what I'm sharing? Or is there any point of, I'm sure all of you, some, at least some of you might be thinking that, where is the common question is, uh, as a teacher, I also will share, that where is the time for us to go and check his uh, affective domain and check his uh, psychomotor domain, I, cognitive domain, I only tell, this is that is the easiest thing that we do, that's why we are doing that. But it is a teaching, is, according to me, the teaching is the most complex profession compared to any other profession that uh, compared to any other profession this is the most complex because this is what what we are making it very safely is i'm teaching and i'm assuming all of them are learning i am getting on with my activity then uh, that's fine because we don't have any other uh, uh, way by which you unless you have to satisfy right so i'll satisfy ask uh, the conventional way of what is happening i ask a student any questions there will be few students always in the sitting in the front benches. They ask few questions. Then uh, we'll explain to them. And then yes, the rest of them, they don't respond. So anyway, I don't pay attention to them. So we will go on next class. They go on and on. The students who are not able to learn, pay attention, still they are not able to address. How many of the, any of the teachers can tell me that any other, any strategy by which you make the students who are not active how to engage them in making the learning better to him? Can any suggest one or two activities by which the student, the so-called slow learners, how do I engage them in the learning activity? Any one or two, can you share some of the methods by which all of you are teachers? Sir, sir. Yeah, can you please tell, you introduce yourself before you speak. It's, uh, my name is DRL Sharma, sir. Yeah. Uh, but only um, whatever I know, I am telling. I am not. Uh, yeah, please. No, no. This is this is what we are learning. Peer learning is taking place here. Yes, sir. Uh, by, uh, like uh, the main reason why the student remains backward is uh, because of his attitude towards the learning process is uh, not proper. Exactly. Not proper. Exactly. 
so now if my class students the men at any class you take about 20 students 30 students sitting in their learnings their approach towards the learning is not clear because they are not motivated there we call that as an attitude but how, is it not if a, my objective is to bring all 60 students to the same level should that not be addressed in some manner i am not saying that you address all to the extent possible should that be addressed or not bringing the change in their attitude should that be part of the process or not but first first you answer conceptually yes or no is it required yes it is required is required but then do we have the provisions to address that do engaging them in the activities we have oh, time is limited i have to take 40 classes and then not only this class i have several other classes several other assignments as a teacher i am burdened with so many other aspects possibly yes i will not be able to pay attention to that and then i carry on with whatever that is happening right this is what yes. the is the present situation is now my question is can this issue be addressed in some manner using the digital tools digital technologies which you this is my precisely my question is right to certain extent it can be addressed yes it can be addressed yeah that's what my this is what i am calling as a digital pedagogical skill making the learner to be in the process of learning using the your uh, pedagogical skills employed by the teacher different tools and the different ways and engaging them should be so now i just here i take a quote uh, i never teach my pupils i only attempt to provide the conditions in which provide the conditions in which the students can learn by themselves it is not none other than albert einstein right so look at this is our as a teacher are we doing that no no we are only taking that teacher as a center stage whatever i teach is the veda and the students are only taking that this is no longer valid now what is required is the resources that are available with one's head is very very limited you should not confine the learner only to the knowledge of the teacher but provide them a teacher a student can learn much better than what a student a teacher can possess i don't know how many teachers can accept that is it true the students can do a learning much better than what a teacher can learn right it is it's a fact right but this is what it is if you want to move, our focus should be on the learning the you should provide the right conditions on which the students learn that is the role of a, a teacher as a facilitator It is more than the teacher as a source of knowledge Right? This is so more now, true in the light of this COVID and digital era. Yeah, this is, even before it is important, but now it is more important because we. This is what I'm saying. Uh, um, we it has made us accelerate our activities. Technology has accelerated our process of thinking about teaching and learning has been accelerated by at least a five years. or maybe a decade maybe if only uh, this covid had not been there i don't know whether uh, how many of us have uh, uh, paid much attention because we are comfortable in going through the teaching learning in the classroom four walls then we have been carrying on for years and years and then it is realizing some outcomes i'm not saying that uh, is not realizing it is uh, in some manner but we would not have paid attention but now because of the covid we are made to think in terms of using this and then possibly as yes, the world has proven that this kind of engaging the students in an asynchronous mode that is in a um, uh, not in the live mode engaging them in some with the different tools the different platforms the learning ability of the students learning outcomes of the students is proved to be much better than the conventional classroom as well in some in some sense i am not saying that uh, please don't uh, mistake me for saying that i am not saying that uh, a conventional classroom is to be replaced with this there is a reason why order of the day is going to be a blended learning even if the uh, post covid era you are not going to uh, back into the normal uh, uh, only synchronous mode of uh, classrooms in this this is this uh, asynchronous mode of learning is going to stay for a long time to come so there is a reason why you are going to have a blended learning in terms of maybe you engage two so engage them in the uh, offline and then engage them in one or two sessions in a week and then so that you clarify your doubts and so on and so forth 
that's the reason why the blended learning probably some of the teachers are going to handle that blended learning and flipped classroom mode so right so in the world of ever more radical and rapid changes acquiring the habit of learning acquiring the habit of learning is a matter of survival acquiring the habit of continuous learning is a matter of survival not is a matter of excellence it is a matter of survival without you continuously learning and updating yourself you just cannot survive in this uh, uh, competitive environment so for that what is required the single most objective with which every every learner must go out from the education institutions is he must have a capability to self learn and lifelong learning in fact that is the reason why uh, your uh, national uh, board of accreditation well defining the graduate outcomes one of them is a lifelong learning i am what is that i am certifying i am framing my curriculum and i am ascertaining that my students coming out of the btech program or mtech program or from my university they have the capability to learn on themselves a lifelong they are going to be lifelong learners right that is the something what is uh, we, we should be able to focus on the ability to learn right uh, this is a very famous uh, quote which i like very much is alvin toffler is a the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write but those who cannot learn who cannot unlearn who cannot relearn right he is whatever the degrees that you may possess whatever the knowledge that you may possess according to this alvin toffler if you are not able to learn new things unlearn the past whatever the some wrong notions or something what you had unlearn this is what is a mental models the, the previously i had some mental models i need to relearn recorrect the models to a right form uh, formulate these models in a right manner which requires unlearn and then relearn the same the technology is changing so fast instead of learning it now i have a lot of other tools technological tools are available i should be able to learn the objectives by relearning and using the different ways so learning unlearning and relearning is become a mantra of success for the future so if that is going to be the mantra of the future for success my learners who are coming out of the universities coming out of my class they must be in, uh, they must be imbibed with the learning unlearning and relearning capabilities so that they can flourish in their career so now i just uh, uh, questions are very crucial in changing the mental maps we are talking about the class, students sitting in my class and they have a different mental maps how do i address those mental maps yes that is the questioning is that's what we ask right we ask some questions in the class and do you have any uh, questions so few students will answer so uh, what is the typical uh, response of the students will be you know, two, two or three students will ask some doubts in the class so we'll give them clarification then what do you know so once you move out of the class yes there will be few students will run behind you out so once you cross the door the few students will come and ask you some more doubts another four or five students they will ask a doubt maybe a 10 students all together but what about the rest of the 70 or 80 students do you, can you ensure that all the rest of the 70 80 students have understood everything not necessary not necessary it's not if they understood then there will be questioning comes because they are not understood they are not there is no questioning here so it is very difficult the, the questions are crucial in changing the mental maps but in a conventional classroom of questioning them and understanding their analyzing their replies will be very few it can be limited to few you can you cannot ask all 60 students to respond for your question slides are not clear ah this slide is possibly yeah. Yeah, thank you for that response uh questions are uh, crucial in changing this mental maps and stimulate the our students to ask their questions is a foundation for learning making stimulate the students to ask the questions is the foundation for learning but here the engaging the students to stimulate their minds to ask questions is something in a conventional four wall of uh, four room four wall classroom it is very difficult I, all of you agree that i don't get that that much time to stimulate all 60 minds but then what do i do because i cannot do that 
can i whatever satisfied with the 10 students i have answered and then it is fine or something i should make as a, i should make an attempt to see that how do i reach out to the other students right so in that learning caring is very crucial for aspect of it i'm sure all of you teachers basically uh, i just quote one of the david goldberg he's a well known educationist you can search in google and you'll get to huge literature on him he says if a teacher is uh, you complete your class and the teacher is uh, ask a question and the students do not respond what could be the possible reason is possible reason is uh, that he what he says is the learner do not have a trust on the teacher i'm i i'm not this is not my statement it is david goldberg statement is not a trust means now what does it mean possibly trust means is there in only learner gets a feel that the teacher is there to care for me teacher is there to mentor for me teacher is there to help me to understand if that feeling is there that's what he is calling as a trust then students will ask right so that means here caring for the individual student in a class is very much crucial for making the student to come out of their uh, come out of their shells and then open up right so the only it is not a, a overnight change it has to happen in a teacher has to be consciously put an effort to see that i am caring for my students and then possibly that will bring a some change in the, some of the students and so on and so forth this is very crucial aspect of it to change their mental maps you should be connected with what they care about and their goals for themselves right is this is what we call as a motivation if i am more if i motivate my student it means what the student should make his mental models of oh this subject is uh, is going to be is the teacher is very uh, is really interested in uh, our students interest take care of the students interest so i so that is the first step second step yes he is giving some knowledge which is going to be useful for my career when you talk about this what we give a big picture of any subject what we are talking about this is going to be useful and then in the career when you started acting you started practicing your profession possibly these things are required and hence we are learning this that 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 motivation that you are giving as part of the initial lectures of any of the classes that's what here that means the the students you should connect the, we should make the students to be connected with what they care about their goals and they set for themselves so you should and that's the reason why we ask students what is your goal right what is your objective what is your interest so in the first class generally we spend time that is essentially that activity brings the connection yes. for example yesterday i had a class an mtech first class on mtech we started the last week and then when i started interacting with the students many of the students tell us sir uh, uh, what is the best thing that you like in this covid i said i started preparing food for my parents my mother i helped my mother and i learned a lot of cooking uh, quite a good number of stu- boys students not only girls students boys students as well they responded yes there so this is something where you no know, that is what is care for themselves and care for how they spend care for their health care for so there are several ways sir so personalization in the classroom is a component contributing to the learner personalization in the classroom is essential component in advancing the learning in the students right so then what is the i'm sure all of you have several questions so where is the question of personalization in a class of 120 students i don't get to the level of personalization knowing all 120 students yes definitely you can't do that right but this is where you can do in terms of their learning abilities learning their cognitive abilities can be assessed by doing your digital tools and deploying the digital tools and engaging them in some different kinds of activities you can assess the mental models and you can assess their cognitive skills you can understand their how far they understood who are uh, who are not who are able to follow who are not able to follow this uh, using the so called uh, where uh, i th- i'm sure other speakers are going to share about the different format of assessment tools and so on and so forth so using that i can assess and then possibly i can pay attention how i can help them the digital pedagogy is all about that right the three important aspects of teaching learning are course planning i'm not going to talk about engaging the student is the most important aspect of the digital pedagogy how do i engage the students in a different ways 
so that the student is motivated, the, so that his learning takes place in the cognitive domain, learning takes place in the affective domain, learning takes place in the psychomotor domain. Uh, so no, no doubt the course planning and the performance assessment are the other important aspects of our uh, teaching learning process. But then I am, my focus is on this engaging the students so that the learning of better outcomes will be realized. Um, yeah. So now you look at uh, the student engagement. The student engagement can be in a synchronous mode and can be in a synchronous mode. And engaging the student in synchronous mode has a, known to have a profound influence on the learning. Not me, me saying, but the world over people are in education literature tells that the async engaging the student in asynchronous mode has a profound influence on the learning of the students. Right? So in fact, we have not realized it till now because most many of you have not realized this till now because we never attempted that. But now we realize that it is we, have, we are forced to engage the students in an asynchronous mode of learning. Then possibly you will see that results of this engaging the students in an asynchronous mode of learning is going to give you a better learning outcomes. Provided it is blended with your live blended, right environment and right resources and so on. So to meet these objectives of this, uh, teachers must be acquainted with domain knowledge. Um, uh, we are assuming that we are all masters in the domain knowledge. Understanding of the pedagogical principles. Yes, this is what I am talking about. This is, you should understand how the learner learns and so on, how to import, what strategies that I should adopt, possibly some of the instruction strategies to adopt to this uh, pedagogical principles are going to be dealt by the other speakers in the next sessions. Most importantly is use of appropriate technology tools in the te teaching learning process. All these three put together is going to make the learning better. Right? So that's the point what I want to drive. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, I have time for 20 minutes. Uh, uh, who is Naresh? Naresh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Up to one o'clock? Yeah. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Now, the motivation is, now the motivation becomes, this is what is an effective domain. You should make the students to, this is what we use a uh, motivation to motivate them to the process of learning. Now, you are motivating them for what? Motivating them for what? Are we motivating them for extrinsic reward? Or are we motivating them with igniting this interest, intrinsic interest? This is where your uh, new education policy is also uh, says that you should pay attention to the different interests of the students also must be learners also must be safeguarded in the education system. So they may, I may be doing engineering. If somebody is interested in um, music, he should be able to carry out the music. That's what the new education policy advocates for. So now when you are motivating it, motivating this for extrinsic reward, extrinsic reward is means is only uh, is motivation. You ask many of the students nowadays. So what is the motivation to understand, uh, to attend the classes? Because attendance is compulsory, right? This is extrinsic reward. It's not reward. And then why is, if, even if attendance is not made mandatory, why is attending the classes? What is the next level of, uh, what is his motivation? Can you tell me the most more important motivation for the students to attend classes nowadays? Nowadays in brackets. Pass exams. Pass exams, right? So is why he has to pass exam? Again, Get degree. Again, there is an extrinsic reward. Yes, degree. Why, why degree? Job. Yes, placement. Right? Please, please. There are, these are all the extrinsic rewards. You are motivating for your job and then he has to get some CGPA. If he has to get some CGPA, he has to get some SGPA. If he has to get some SGPA in this subject, he has to get the A grade. That is what is an extrinsic reward. He is always correlating the learning with this reward, extrinsic rewards. Right? We cannot do that. We cannot change that. But then the reason is why they are not going beyond their uh, 
ignite the their mind is ignited with number of thoughts but they're suppressing the thoughts because this extrinsic reward is dominating their intrinsic interests the extrinsic rewards are dominating the intrinsic interests and then whole focus is on the extrinsic rewards and then work only for the work for the grade work for the cgpa work for sgpa work for the job and then what after then people realize that the what is something what they are missing the intrinsic interest was never nurtured intrinsic interest is not ignited properly not paid attention to it and that's all the things that happens right so the motivation should touch upon this creating that uh, stimulating their intrinsic interest rather than this extrinsic reward now there are types of learners and there is a deep learner there is a bulimic learners the performance avoiders this is available this terminology and vocabulary is available in somewhere in the literature i read some article and then i copied from that so the deep learners are those learners who are very actively participating in the class right so these deep learners they don't need the teachers requirement of the teacher for them is very much different what about this performance avoiders performance avoiders last category of students performance avoiders they have a fear of failure in the back in the back of their mind it always the failure haunts them so it, thereby they are not confident enough about asking any doubt and they are not even express their fear they always they will be uh, struggling in the, in the class and then possibly you engage in some activity if the teacher gives a permission he will engage in the mobile activity or do something else if the teacher is not permitted he will be only looking at uh, uh, applied his eyes on the teacher and then applies his mind somewhere else right and these are the performance avoiders and then this other mid category of the students is your bulimic learners or those they can give them a push a little push possibly yes they will be able to do better right whereas the for the deep learners are the ones the teacher their, their requirement from the you know, from the teacher is you should give them a thought provoking in the most challenging questions are given more challenging thought process because they are already engaged in their building their uh, learning activity and hence the requirement from them on the part of the teacher is different from the requirement of the teacher from the teacher on the part of the performance avoiders is different on the part of the bulimic learners the expectations from the bulimic learners on the teachers are going to be different isn't it do you agree with that what is the bottom line bottom line is all 60 of the students sitting in my class must be realizing the learning outcome same but the students sitting in my class are of this category of students somebody is very challenging question somebody is uh, if you require more mid segment the so called normal curve what we gaussian curve we, we do is only that bulimic learners you give them some inputs you should give them some motivation they will be engaged in some activity they do their sincere effort and do achieve something right so but the on the expectations uh, from the deep learners to the bulimic learners and performance avoiders are different then how do the teacher engages all these three category of the students to whom i yes, exactly the mr uh, who is that uh, yeah mr uh, kruwada ks was kruwada to whom yes, can, yes exactly that is what i am so what we are doing that can you tell me mr kruwada yes, where, where are you paying attention in the conventionally generally we will teach for the uh, average and uh, students average students that, that is a mean what is the, that is what the bulimic, this is what is the bulimic learners so they yes, are, have intrinsic interest to learn but then you motivate them a little bit and then push them to do engage in some activity they learn so yes, our focus is only reaching out to them when in a conventional class they in a class of 70 or 80 possibly the bulimic learners majority of the bulimic will be in the in this category of bulimic learners and then there will be some category of the deep learners and some category of the performance avoiders the so called we are putting the tag of uh, slow learners are going to be there in the class but then how do i engage them without engaging them in a right manner it's not possible for to for them to learn if my objective is to bring all these three segments of the students to realize the similar outcomes or common minimum outcomes 
then how do i realize that how do i engage the students that is the biggest challenge that you all face them right in is so here i'll just quote very 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 significant profound statement by sigfred engelman he is a great educationist what he says any student can learn any skill if and only if any student can learn any skill if and only if they have mastered the prerequisite knowledge and skills and the instruction is unambiguous the prerequisite knowledge is same that's what we are assuming here the unfortunate situation is we are assuming all of them are passing through intermediate all of them are passing through jee so then they are am assuming the prerequisite knowledge in something i am assuming but the fact is different do you agree with that yes yes sir yes sir yes yeah so and the instruction is unambiguous whatever that instruction that i am giving is very clear to all 60 or all 90 in terms of the language in terms of fluency in terms of the the way i communicate it is unambiguous this is the number point number 1 the most number important uh, second point is students are placed in instruction at their skill level right students are placed in instruction engaging with active starting from their skill level this is where is skill level means this is i was talking about the when i say ionization photo ionization i am assuming that photo ionization is known i go on with the, how do i use it for uh, solar or photovoltaic cells or some some such thing i am assuming that but actually the student do not have any ionization photo ionization and so on he don't remember he has not studied or he is ignored that possibly i am assuming and then that that becomes a gap for him so he will end up with that right so this is one learning cannot be discontinuous that means if a student is having a certain knowledge at this level and then if i can make him to engage in activity to traverse from this position to this position yes his learning is continuous right but here the scenario is actually his level is here and i assume that his level is here but i assume that i am traversing from him to to this level i am guiding only this this gap this level to this x to y and y to z i am assuming y is the middle level i am assuming and i am moving on to taking his cognitive level to the z level whereas he is actually at x level much lower than y i i don't pay any attention to that this is where you call uh, evening classes we give several names to address this uh, slow call learner put them in sir, yes sir can we by any way make some uh, understand some generalized process of learning how learning goes or goes through in a generalized way and uh, increase the more number of people learning uh, the subject that we are teaching that's exactly i i have on one on next slide i am going to talk about that we just yes. go for the for the next slide yeah thank you sir yeah and then instruction is modified to accommodate each student's rate of learning rate of learning of the students are different you some student has a deep learners have some rate of learning bulimic learners have some rate of learning and the performance avoiders have some kind of a learning then you expect all of them to be learn in the same level but it is not right this is a third condition if all of them have to learn the same the condition that is required to they should be placed should accommodate their learning at their own rate of learning fourth one is this is very most important as an education the program structure is designed to ensure mastery of the content this is where uh, the whole curriculum is uh, Okay, this is our responsibility. If it is not fulfilling, it means definitely I, as a teacher, I quote this. Our my instruction design, my instruction strategies that I am adopting is not reaching out to this. This is this is the universal truth. These are the facts. What has been mentioned this by this gentleman, Siegfried Nagelman. This is the fact. That is what the human uh, conscience says. Then we have to accommodate that. okay yeah, thank you somebody is commenting uh, sir i am 31 year school education by your lecture i am getting more knowledgeable in education from your great presentation thank you thank you kuruwada uh, let me go on now this is what uh, kuruwada this the were on the question to your answer is uh, the answer to your question is this so i am sure many of the teachers must be knowing about the benjamin bloom 
Bloom is a great uh, educationist. He did a lot of uh, uh, great education researcher, and then after all, some of you are know that the Bloom's um, the Bloom's taxonomy, all of us, is, Bloom's taxonomy yes, that we know higher order thinking seals and so on. In fact, that yes, Bloom's taxonomy that has been prescribed by NBA is coming out of this Benjamin Bloom. Now, he, the Benjamin Bloom has conducted an experiment. Uh, he is class of 30. This is his conventional class. This is number one. <coughs> is a conventional class. The conventional class is conducted this, uh, the number of students on the y axis and the level of achievement is on the x axis. Right? So he conducted, he conducted a conventional class and he conducted a test and then he, uh, he plotted the curve. The level of a, a, a attainment versus number of students attained. This is the, the this is what is the, our so-called uh, Gaussian curve. Right now he saw that there is a this is what your mid segment of the so-called bulimic learners. The number of students who are present here. These are your so-called bulimic uh, uh, bulimic learners. The mid segment of the average students with whom uh, on who we are giving a lot of inputs on that. Right. This is what we expect. Now. This is the so I mean anything lower than this on the descending and the ascending side of this thing, these are the so called performance avoiders, and these are the excellent the level of achievement attainments is much higher. These are your the so called deep learners. The deep learners are here, bulimic learners are here, and the performance avoiders are here. Now, he wanted to what is his objective? His objective was to bring this best average outcomes. Average outcome, what is attained by the students, large number of students, is to be increased further, push it towards the right. And then he has conducted the mastery learning. The mastery learning means for every one class of uh, teaching, he has also conducted tutored one hour of uh, additional. So let's say he has a uh, 20 hours of a conventional teaching. He has spent another 20 hours of teaching, engaging the students for the, and then, uh, then that's what he calls as a mastery learning. With that, he conducted the assessment and then he saw that there is a deviation. Now we can see that this average performance level is increased by some sigma. Is increased by some sigma. And the number of students is also increased by this number. Right? So what is that, what is that info from it? That means I am making more personalization. He has spent more time. For 20 hours, he engaged in the 40 hours. And then his, his average, attain, average attainment levels is increased, and the number of students who have attained is also increased. And that is understood. Right? All of you agree with that? There's nothing new in it. Now, can we do that? We cannot do that. Now, he also conducted the third experiment. What is the third experiment? The third experiment, what he conducted is he has given the personalized education for the 30 students. He has given the tutored personally at the personal level, all 30. But then, what do you know? What is the realizing the outcome? What he realized? Yeah, this is a, you can see that the maximum number of students who have attained this is almost two times or three times than what he has attained with the conventional classroom. That's one. Number is increasing. That's one. Number is increasing. The second thing is. The attainment level also, the maximum attainment level is increased by two sigma, two times the standard. This is what you call as the Bloom's double sigma effect. With this experiment, what he proved is, if only you take the students to the personalized level, the education and the attainment, education, the attainment levels, as well as the average number of students who attain that level, can be increased in a significant manner. That's what the message that he has given to the world through his experiment. Now, how do we, you cannot say that give me uh, only one class and I will engage all the students in a person. That's not possible. If this way, this mode of engaging the student is not possible. And this mode of, uh, I am given uh, four hours and then give me another four hours, uh, I will engage and uh, learning outcomes, I will improve. No way, the no management, no education institution can give you that. That is also ruled out. But then, what is the method is that is available to you is only this. Then how do I use this? This is where my conventional classroom learning outcomes is this, and the number of students attend is this. 
how do i use my digital te digital technology digital pedagogy and whatever that i use it engage the student in asynchronous mode engage because synchronous mode is not possible synchronous mode is already limited the number of, i can't get more than four classes in a week i i have to engage, do something engage them in an asynchronous mode of engagement and then thereby i can achieve the effect of master learning i can achieve the effect of personalized learning can be given with the using the digital tools and the digital technologies so for that the teacher that is the work that is to be carried out by the teacher is definitely is much more but then the point what i want to drive here is yes using your digital technology and the digital tools in a, in a right manner using the right pedagogical approaches you can may advance the learning outcomes but to be in, the average learning outcomes can be increased number of students that you can achieve that level also can be increased in a significant manner by engaging the student in a blended learning blended learning means engaging this in a conventional mode but also engaging them in an asynchronous mode together is going to realize the learning outcomes that way we, in fact we should um, thank covid because it has advanced us it made us to realize the certain things in fact some of the teachers who have been engaging in this are made to is clear that it is uh, uh, we are able to achieve this this kind of a experience yes if you do sincerely make some effort sincerely do that we can see a trend in this direction we cannot prove like what benjamin uh, benjamin bloom has proved but you can as a teacher you can feel yes there's a learning outcomes can is increase in some manner because the effectiveness it all depends on the effectiveness this is the point what i want to try yeah three way thinking is uh, you need to have a teaching skills and you have a, you to use a, a different models to engage the student this is most important engaging the students through different models and through different tools and then maintaining the uh, teaching relationships right caring for the student they are more important unless these three are embedded you cannot make the learning process to be more fruitful to the students <laughs> Yeah, no, I just moved the slides and I, I skipped the, some of the slides. Uh, I think it's already one o'clock. Is this? Uh, I'll just skip the slides. So, what the role of the teacher is? So, uh, role of the teacher is to facilitate the learning in the learners in the multiple modalities. Work as an effective member of the learning teams. The teachers will be part of the learning teams with a wide range of knowledge and skills whose expertise is orchestrated to improve the learning. So this is what we need to take the role as a teacher. And in open learning ecology, teachers must embrace the greater diversity of spaces, times, resources, media, and methods of learning. 21st century learning environments are synchronous, asynchronous, face-to-face, -face, virtual, local, and global. We all should accept the more the uh, this kind of a virtual environment and then make best out of this virtual environments to make the learning outcomes better. and the teachers must be able to full range use the full range of digital age learning tools to improve the student engagement and achievements teacher will draw on digital technology to customize the learning activities for individual student needs and work with the students in co create new learning opportunities teachers must respect their students abilities to contribute to the work of their learning team uh, so be lifelong learners and be global educators right and there are a lot of uh, whole gamut of digital tools uh, that are comes for the handy for the classroom teaching especially engaging the so all of my colleagues are going to share in the next 4 or 5 days about the digital tools lms moodle video presentation <laughs> all that are going to be shared as part of the uh, activities in the next 3 or 4 days otherwise that's all i will skip some of the slides and then thank you and uh, i stop at this point uh, unless you have uh, one or two questions quickly